Well, you brought in uh, Newfoundland there when you were talking about Codco. Um, they were a great influence, uh, I think, for a lot of mm. artists. In fact, I just showed my son, who's 24, mm. some of the, the internet Codco, which he'd yeah, never yeah, seen. Yeah. And like he's blown, he was blown away by how outside the box they were, mm. like the, the three priests uh, yeah. sketch. You yeah. know, it was amazing, amazing work. Yeah. So I'm not, uh, I'm not surprised that they were a, a big influence. But uh, Newfoundland is, is obviously a place that you're from. So how does Newfoundland, and many of the stories you tell are Newfoundland stories. So how is the sense of place? How does it inspire you? What's your relationship? What are you trying to do when you write about Newfoundland? Sure. Um, I remember I was workshopping uh, uh, I was workshopping a show in Calgary many, many years ago. I guess uh, a lunchbox theater would have been 96, 97. That was Butler's, uh, Butler's No, March? it was a piece called, uh, what was it? It was a piece called Round Robin. I think it was okay. Round Robin. It was the first thing, piece I did out there. And uh, I was working with Joanne DeLeo, who was the artistic director out there at the time. Uh, and she, I remember in the middle of this workshop, uh, it wasn't Round Robin, it was another piece called Fat Boy. And in the middle of this workshop, uh, she was talking to me about something and then she said these words and I'll never forget. She said, you have an extraordinary sense of place in your work. And I had no idea what she was talking about. I kind of really? went, oh, okay. Yeah. And I had no idea what she was talking about. And the reason why I didn't is because I had spent most of my, um, most of the, you know, the first six, seven plays that I wrote really actively trying to not write about Newfoundland. Actively trying to not write about Newfoundland. Weird, given that Codco and such yeah. people were such an <laughs> extraordinary influence. Yeah. Actively trying not to write about Newfoundland. And I, I did so uh, because I felt that um, I had this ambition that I wanted to be a playwright. By that point, I, I wanted to be a playwright and I wanted to have my work produced elsewhere. And, and I had this notion that, you know, who was going to program a show in Vancouver about Newfoundland? Like, who cares, right? And uh, so, you know, and even stuff like Under Wraps, which we're going back to do, you know, we're just about to start rehearsals again for that show. When I, we first did that in 1997, it's kind of set in Newfoundland. It's kind of based on some true things that happened to me. And it's kind of based in, uh, you know, in Newfoundland. But I changed, like, I changed all the, all the names of the coffee shops. I altered them. I purposefully tried to distance it from yes. the reality of what St. John's was. And not even really consciously, but I just, you know, and I, I, it was just how I went about things. And... Um, and then in 2000, uh, Jeff Pitcher, who had just started uh, as the artistic director of Theatre Newfoundland Labrador in Cornerbrook, and I'd met Jeff a number of years previous uh, at uh, a workshop at CBC Television in Toronto, and uh, he, he, wanted to, he wanted to start mining some of the, the local stories, local narratives around Grossmore National Park to turn into to work out there. And so he thought of me, and I was really happy that he did, I, you know, and I was... Uh, I guess about thirty or so, and it was one of my one of my first commissions. I had done a couple of commissions for um, for Lunchbox Theater, but this I think was probably my first commission in Newfoundland, and uh, and so he came to me with this story about this Newfoundland nurse, this British nurse who moved to Newfoundland, and and you know I, I had I had never heard of this person. I didn't had any interest in British nurses coming. It just sounded all very dry and boring right. to me. But it was a work, so I right. took I took the job. And um, and then I started researching this thing and discovered that this woman, you know, Nurse Mary Bennett, that her, her, her life was this extraordinary, extraordinary thing that I had never, I had never heard of. I'd never heard about this woman uh, going to school. Um, and the whole dream with that show, uh, so I, I wrote, it was a piece called Tempting Providence, and the whole dream with that show, as expressed by Jeff Pitcher and Gaylene Buckle, who were running the company, who still are there, was that uh, if this thing is successful, we're gonna run it at the summer festival in Cowhead. And if it's really successful, we're gonna do a tour of the province's um, old age homes because right. that's the generation that would really know Nurse Mary Bennett would really care about this story. She was this miraculous midwife, you know, who kind of birthed every baby, every baby born between yes. 1921 and 1970 on yeah. that part of the island was at the hands of this woman. You know, right. everyone has a story connected to her. Right. He pulled 5,000 teeth, like she was a dentist, she was yeah. a vet, she was everything. Um, so, uh, that, that was their big dream. So they said, you know, uh, uh, so make it a specific, like make it really specific to that town and, and keep it small and keep it really simple. And, and, and so that's what I did. I, for the first time, I really gave myself over to writing a real full on Newfoundland kind of dialect and, and turns of phrase. And, 
um, using place names and, and, and surnames from that area and, and just really not trying to change any of that stuff, really basing it and writing it for the people of that town, like, you know. And uh, and so then it happened uh, in Cowhead. The show went up and, you know, Jill directed it. Um, and the show went up and it was very successful that summer. And then Artistic Fraud, we decided to bring it into St. John's and Jill wanted to bring it in. And I was like... I don't know. Like, it's pretty specific to Cowhead, Newfoundland. I don't know how it's going to do <laughs> right. in St. John's. And and so we brought it in, and it did really, really well here. And then yeah. the National Arts Centre wanted to buy it for Ottawa. And I was like, I don't know. It did okay in Newfoundland. It's like, and so this thing started traveling. I know. And so tell us, where has it gone? It's and, gone. It's and gone and how I mean, many it's, performances? It's incredible. It's traveled all across. In the last, so, it, you know, it's it premiered June 1st. 2002 and so the last 13 years it's traveled all across Canada uh, everywhere I think except Quebec okay. and maybe a couple of the territories uh, multiple times it's done routes in Canada it's played a few dates in the States it's done all over UK and Ireland it's done Australia um, it's played over 700 performances in that time this is this is something that comes up a lot like how pacific should you be and and i think well tennessee williams like the, the I deep know, south it's right? fascinating it's fascinating and and yeah. and i think that uh, often people um you know they end up cutting their work off because they they think that oh it has to be able to play in toronto or totally whatever. totally but really people are yeah. interested in pacific yes yeah. totally i agree yes. and it, yeah. that 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 play woke me up to that it really yeah. changed my and i i remember sitting across the table from you know uh sitting across the table from an irish stage manager in edinburgh scotland at the edinburgh fringe festival where it was playing at the traverse theater and uh, this woman telling me, you know, th this this is the Ireland of my grandmother. I remember my grandmother telling me stories about her community that were stories. And then when I saw this, I went, that's, it's a play about community. And right. she said it's a play about community. And I had written this three, three years previous. It's like, oh, yeah, it's a play about, I didn't know that when I wrote it. I just wrote yeah. this biography play. And, but it's a play about community. And, and, and somehow that uh, allows it to resonate wherever it goes. So it completely changed my relationship to 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 working uh, to writing Newfoundland narratives, and I really embraced it after that. Right. Um, and, and and kind of unabashedly embraced it. And you know, I've recently been asked to uh, that that kind of same question by somebody else, like, what am I trying to, uh, trying to do? I'm paraphrasing your question, but right. what am I trying to do when writing about Newfoundland? What are my goals in writing about Newfoundland? And um, and, I, and, you know, I just see these other, like Tennessee Williams is a great example, or Michelle Marc Bouchard's Quebec, a lot of Quebec playwrights, uh, you know, and you people don't blink at the specificity of place in that. Yeah. Because uh, I guess somehow, and this is how I've come to put it, somehow those are seen as participatory world cultures. Right. That you're writing from within a, a, a known participatory world culture. And if we were sitting in a theater in Toronto or about to walk into a theater in Toronto to see a show from Iceland, I think most of us would be very excited about what we were about to see. Right. But somehow within Canada, regionally, yeah. we have this doubt about whether that can actually happen. And I had, I had to, you know, a, a playwright friend of mine passed uh, Tempting Providence on to um, a translator in Japan once to right. look at uh, for translation. And it's not just with Canada. This is my yeah. point. The translator came back and said, "Oh, I, I don't, I don't think it. I, it's too culturally specific. I don't think it would have resonance for Japanese audiences." And I, and I reject that. <laughs> right. I, ha I have to reject that because uh, I think because the same is not true for me. If yeah. if at the LSPU Hall down the street tomorrow there was a show from rural Japan, I would be fascinated. There would yes. be a lineup around the corner to see that thing. Yeah. So I refuse to believe that, if not so now, that, that my place in the world can't be that elsewhere. Yeah. That I can't somehow, what I'm trying to do, right. that I somehow can't um, help, certainly not do it single-handedly, and certainly made people have done it bigger and better than I have, but somehow to contribute to uh, Newfoundland as a place and its cultural identity in the world as being somewhere that it would cause a, a, a moment of excitement to, to see a piece of theatre or see a musician or somewhere from there because it is this um, unknown and it is this place of interest, like Iceland, yes. who actually have less people than us. <laughs> you know? I, I think it's interesting, actually, that maybe, maybe the great thing that's happened with your work, like for Tempting Province, is that it's, it's, it's built here, it, it goes out from here as a product from here or as a play from here. Mm. 
I know that Jenna Spence, for instance, was very unhappy with how cat lovers uh, mm. went over in Toronto. And, and that was a case of it being, you know, taken completely away from here and just done as a play in Toronto. Do you have, when your work goes out to a place like Toronto, do you feel it sits the same way? Or do you, do you have that moment of, I don't know if this audience is going to get it? Or do you have any concerns around that? Or I have that worry all the time. I mean, you know, I have, I have the great benefit, I guess, of that. You know, every time I write a play, it's I know it's going to get produced because it gets self. I, I, you know, I, I work with the best director in the world for my work, Jill Kiley, right. uh, and it gets produced for my company, and, and and I get a fair amount of say of how that happens, and and so, and th and that's been the standard. Like that's been kind of just how it's worked for me, and I've been really lucky with that. But it's developed in me this control <laughs> right. it's developed in me the sense sure, of that you know and sure. that a lot of writers don't uh, get to have that I, I actually get to have um, a fair amount of artistic control after the final uh, draft is sent off the production draft is sent off so um, so there's that but you know like for example tempting Providence um, uh, you know once it started to tour a little bit and started to get well known um, the, the requests started coming in for for productions you know People wanted to do their own productions, which I, in spirit, I don't really have a problem with. Um, you know, the 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 company TNL that we're doing it, we're working very very hard to tour the show, and and out of respect to that, and out of respect to how good they've been to me, uh, we we had agreed, and I had agreed, like as long as you guys want to tour the show, you tour it, and I'm really happy with this production, and I'm really happy with how you're getting it out I there. See. That's so there were so there are a couple of cities, for example, um, and that's worked out. To everyone's benefit, like there was a there was a a company in in Calgary for one, at one point that wanted to produce Tempting Providence, and it kind of hurt to turn that down. And then you know, two seasons later, it was at ATP. Ah, uh, yes. Right. So yes, it, it yes. kind of worked out to everyone's. I mean, maybe not to that company's benefit, but certainly to to TNL's benefit and to my benefit for for me to to keep my faith with that original production. So no one else has really done. There was a French translation that happened in in Moncton. Uh, not Moncton, New Brunswick, sorry, that toured um, around Atlantic Canada of Tempting, but no one else has done that show. And, uh, but but all of that being said, that, you know, when when the new work does go into Toronto or anywhere else, I do I do have this feeling of, um, I do, I I don't think it's validated, but I do have this feeling of whether people are going to get it and whether, whether that, that thing that I was talking about earlier with Tempting Providence of, well, you know, it worked here, but will it work? I do have right. that, of course. I think that's natural to have that. Um, and sometimes it's, you know, sometimes it's validated by um, every now and then you'll hear a comment that, you know, and of course you always remember the worst reviews. Yes, you never of remember course. That. Yeah. But, you know, we did, you know, we did Oil and Water uh, in Calgary last year and I was actually cautioned not to listen to this review and not that I want to turn this into talking about bad yeah. reviews because yeah. I don't. But I was actually cautioned not to listen to this review because it was uh, was really um, a bad review. Uh, and uh, the reviewer, well, beyond ending the review with essentially saying, don't bother. Right. Don't bother? It's four years of my life. Like yeah. four years, you know, 20 people working on this project for it. Don't bother? Like, is there anything more dismissive you can say? Hurtful, <laughs> to say the least. Um but this reviewer said, uh, I didn't hear the review, I was told about it by Jill, that the reviewer said, which is why she don't listen to it, yeah. the reviewer said, uh, uh, you know, there's all this talk about, the, you know, there's a story in, in Oil and Water about uh, the Flores Bar Mine in, in, in St. Lawrence and, and, you know, the hundreds of men who lost their lives to industrial disease uh, because of this Flores Bar Mine. It's a central part of the show. And this reviewer said, oh, I just didn't care about the Newfoundlanders. Which made me I could cry thinking about it. Right. Which made a, a, there's a sense of responsibility that comes with uh, there's a sense of responsibility with taking on a story like that that um, that you then put out into the world, and then to hear that come back it makes you feel I failed. <laughs> I failed those men. I failed those families. Which is you know it's a false sense of responsibility. Yes, it is. I'm just telling yeah, a story, yeah, you know. Yeah. But uh, it you do have that. So there's there you know it. Uh, so I, I guess that made me when that happened last summer. It made me realize that yeah, I guess I do internalize the notion that I'm, uh, I'm, I'm worried about. I'm, I'm still worried about how the outside world uh, sees the Newfoundland that I'm reflecting. 
and whether I'm doing a good job of that. Right, you know? right.